Hello, friends. Welcome back to Aunt Debbie's Boutique. So, it is four days till Christmas, and you've got most of your Christmas pack, uh, presents bought. They're not wrapped yet. They're in the closets and in the back of your car. Uh, you've bought most of your groceries for Christmas dinner because you don't want to fight the crowds later this week but you haven't started any prep work on that. And you bought some fabric to make your daughter, granddaughter, niece, whatever, a Christmas dress. And you bought it back in November because you were gonna get it done early this year. And it still isn't done. Now, how do I know this? It's because I've been there too many years when my daughter was young and had all that going on in my life. So, I just want to tell you, there's still time to get that dress done. Uh, you might want to go with a simpler pattern than you had in mind, but uh, you can still get something done. So, today I picked out a very simple, but yet really cute little girl's dress pattern that we're going to do, and I am going to gift it to someone in my family but uh, since it won't get there till after Christmas, I'm not using Christmas fabric on mine. You will probably want to use Christmas fabric if you're trying to get it done in time for that Christmas program at school or church or whatever. Okay, the pattern I have chosen is uh, by Violet Field Threads, and it's called Piper. I'm gonna lay this here. This is how I store all my patterns. Um, this is one of about 20 books that I have with PDF patterns. They're not, not the store-bought kind, the ones you download off the internet. And uh, Violet Field Threads is uh, one of the designers that I use a lot. Uh, they have gorgeous little girls' dresses. And uh, the thing I like about them is most of theirs are to be made out of woven fabric. There's some knits, but, and I sew mainly knits because I sew mainly play clothes, but uh, I don't want to do knits on this channel due to the fact that they're best sewn on a serger and we're just concentrating here on using a sewing machine. So I picked out a pattern that uh, I thought would be easy, but uh, still cute. I cannot show you the pattern pieces, nor can I give you any measurements or anything like that. You'll have to go buy the pattern yourself to get that because I don't want to take anything away from the people who've worked so hard to develop these patterns. Uh, I just want to promote them as best I can. And uh, the only word of caution I would give you about Violet Field Threads patterns is sometimes they tend to run just a little small. So if in doubt, size up. And you should go by their sizing charts. This book has uh, a cover sheet from the pattern and all the instructions in it. And I store my patterns himself and hanging file folders in uh, my numerous file cabinets. And somewhere in here, it will tell you the measurements, and I don't see it right offhand here, but the, uh, you want to take your child's measurements and go by because every designer is a little different. So you want to make sure that you, you pick out the right size. But I would still size up on Violet uh, Thread Fields patterns. And, and part of that's because they're woven and they don't stretch. So, and right now I'm not seeing the measurements, but they're there or they're on their website. And um, so you do want to choose the right size. It Store-bought sizes, don't run consistent and patterns don't run with store-bought sizes always. So don't just say this child wears a size four so in store-bought clothes, so I'm gonna make a four because you might be disappointed. Okay, 
let's get started on this dress. What you're going to need, what I've already cut out, is the front and the back of the dress. This is the front, here's the back laying down here on the bottom. Pair of sleeves. This has that cute little bow, running a bow with the little, um, what do you call that? Little tapered strings on the back, the ends of the bow. Uh, and so those are cut out. A little piece of bias that for the neckline, we've got a couple of collars and we've got uh, the uh, stabilizer for the collar. You do want to use stabilizer in your collar because after you've washed it or anything, it's never going to lay as pretty as you want if you haven't used a stabilizer. So we have a set of stabilizers we're going to need. Uh, two pieces of elastic, and that will vary the length for, according to the size. And uh, we're going to get started on this. You'll be happy to know there's no gathering except on the sleeves. We're not putting a gathered skirt or anything in. There's uh, no buttons or buttonholes or zippers. Another reason I chose this. Okay. One of the first things I want to do is turn on my iron, which I should have already done, but we'll let it heat up. But we're going to iron this stabilizer to the back of the lining of our collar. Now, I'm not following their directions per se. I imagine we're, we do it real similar, but uh, I'm just going to show you the way I would do it because sometimes I don't always agree with how designers tell you to put things together. That doesn't matter. You can put it together any way you want. And then I'm going to put my, I'm, go, I'm going to get all the preliminary work done up front. So when we start sewing on the dress, it goes together really well. So this is going to, uh, be one side of our bow and ribbon. I guess that's what we'll call that. that goes, hangs down. And this will be the other. And I'm gonna face this up because it's going to be the lining and I wanna make sure that I put these the right direction. Okay. So when this is all put together, the scalloped edge will match. So I can go ahead and pin these. The center part's the bow. And this is the ribbon. So with right sides together, I'm going to pin that there. And here, and I'm doing the lined bow. You can do a bow with a rough edge, but I don't, that's mainly for knits and I don't really like raw edges. So even on knits, I probably wouldn't do one. And then on our lining piece of it, I'm going to pin these. And I wanted to lay it all out so I made sure I had everything going in the right direction before I got over to my sewing machine just start sewing which is my usual modus operandi. And then I have to get my seam ripper out because I got ahead of myself. So I will sew these four little seams, then bring it back over here and iron it and put it together to sew the whole thing. Uh, I think my iron's getting hot now, so I'm going to iron my stabilizer on here. And 
Okay, so to make the most of my trips to the sewing machine, I'm going to get my collar ready to sew. And on the collar, I'm um, going to sew, let's see, sew here and all the way around here. We're going to leave this smaller side open for turning it and sewing it to the dress. But all the, uh, the other sides we're going to sew. So let me stick a couple pins in these. And we'll go over to the sewing machine and make these few seams. Okay, I didn't mention, but you need to read every pattern to see what the seam allowance is. And this pattern has a seam allowance of a half inch. And it makes a big difference if you were to sew this with a quarter inch, it uh, it wouldn't all your seams wouldn't meet up right where they needed to, and it wouldn't fit right. So you need to pay very close attention to that. So I don't know if you can see it or not, but I put a piece of tape on here on my machine that marks a half inch, so I will know that I am sewing a half inch. That I'm sewing a half inch. We will iron this, and I think I'll move some of this out of the way while we're doing that. And we do need to clip our curves. And you know, my favorite way to clip curves is with a pinking shear. And I want to get about that close, but not cut through any seams. Now, some people just put a clip ever so often, ever quarter to a half inch. Other people cut out a little V ever so often, but to me, this is the easiest. My iron cooled down so there isn't a lot of steam right now, but we'll get that little bit. It'll heat back up. I hate those automatic timers on my iron. It doesn't know that I need it to stay hot all the time. Okay. Now we want to iron these flat seams open. been watching me for long you know that I'm an ironaholic and I iron and iron and iron everything uh, because it makes your final product so much prettier but I am going to be especially fanatical about doing it on clothing I see people on online all the time that have made the cutest outfits but you can tell they didn't iron as they go and they may not have ironed it in the end and it just 
screams homemade then. And so uh, it's not that they're not a good seamstress because they are. It's that they didn't iron it. Um, so please, if you want the difference between homegrown and professional is in the ironing. I'm putting right sides together on this. Oh, and one other thing is, this stabilizer I used was Pellon SF101, and I'll link it below. Uh, I have seen just recently that, I have to have that little wrinkle out of there, that Waywac, which I get a lot of my sewing supplies there, especially anything in bulk, that they have a different brand that is a whole lot cheaper, because SF101 is very expensive. Uh, for stabilizer, and uh, if I've heard, I mean, I've read other people say they like it just as well, so you might check out the brand that Waywac has, and um, I'll link it below, too. I've never tried it, so I'm not endorsing it yet, but uh, other people that had, where I read this, said it worked really good. Now, I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and sew all the way around, leaving about a three inch gap on this straight side somewhere on it. Not on the bow part, on one of the side parts. Okay, let's do that. Now that I've stitched that all the way around, I left my three inch gap right here on this straight side opposite from these scallops. This part here is the bow part and we, want, we wanted to sew all it. Now, when you're doing the scallops, go real slow to make sure you keep your half inch seam allowance. It's kind of hard to do even for an experienced person. So a, a good idea is to just draw a half inch line around the scallops and then stitch on those. It's easier for me to stitch on a line. Now I didn't do that here, maybe I should have, but um, I didn't think about it in time. Okay, once again, we've got curves. So I'm just gonna take my pinking shears and we'll get this taken care of. I'm also going to cut a little bit right off of these two corners. Now let's turn this right side out and iron it. And while I'm doing that, I want to address uh, the issue of PDF patterns versus store-bought big box patterns. Uh, I muchly prefer PDF patterns, and especially from recognized um, designers, ones that I've bought before. 
and um, and there's quite a few of them out there. The reason is they test and test and test their patterns before they ever release them. And on the public, they have people who are testers. And so when you use your measurements to decide what size to make, it works. I want to tell you about an experience I had while uh, a few years back where a teenage girl was in a choir program and she needed a dress. The choir director had, it was a gown, floor length gown. The choir director had ordered all the fabric just alike and the patterns from a big box store. And according to this girl's measurement, she wore a size 14. Well, you know, the, when we compared it to the pattern, and that's what the, the teacher had bought fabric for. Well, in real life, she wore a size six. I mean, she was the, a tiny, petite little thing. And uh, I said, there is no way if this pattern's even close to store-bought sizes, which, uh, you know, they could be off a size or so, but not that much. So I had some um, fabric that I wasn't going to use for anything that was left over from something else. And I said, we're going to make a muslin first. And I made the size 14. And of course, it just swallowed her. But I could see by how much I had to take it up, what size to really make. That's been my experience a lot of the times with big box stores and... Um, over the years, it's changed. Some patterns, I know back when I first started sewing, kids' patterns always ran big, but that's not always the case now. And uh, so, it's they're designed by different people, not the same person designs every pattern. And I'm told they're fresh out of design school when they're or drafting school when they're drafting these up and maybe they make the original pattern in a size 10 and then draft all the other sizes, but I don't know if they test them or not, but I, I just have ha had so much bad luck getting sizes right by using store-bought patterns. And that is so frustrating to put all your time and energy into making something only to have it not fit in the end. Uh, and I think that's what's ruined a lot of people from trying to sew for themselves too. So that's why I'm making a plug for these independent designers. A lot of them have Etsy shops. Some, most of them have their own website. Uh, Violet Field Threads is just one. Patterns for Pirates, Peekaboo, Made for Mermaids, Tada, Tada patterns. Uh, I'm just drawing a blank now. There's so many of them. CKC. Uh, anyway, I I would recommend those. Now, when you download a pattern from them, you have to put it together. If you use the one, the kind that prints out on a home printer. They're eight and a half by 11 sheets and you have to tape them all together. And that can get old after a while. But most of them nowadays also have uh, AO files, which are, are to be put plotted on a 36 inch plotter. And if you, I just happen to have several 36 inch plotters at my office that I use to plot them out. And then they're all one piece. Or you can take it to a, a store like Kinko's that does that kind of stuff, or I think there's a place called PDF Plotting or something like that online that you can email your patterns to and they'll plot them and send them to you and that they're cheaper than a lot of stores. Uh, there's also nowadays projector files and a lot of people are using those where you have your projector up on your ceiling and you just project it down onto your fabric and then trace it with chalk before you cut it out. Uh, I haven't gotten into that. Um, just sounds like a headache to me, but 
if I was still sewing a whole lot of children's clothes, I might. So, uh, bear all that in mind and check out all these designers and the wonderful patterns they have if you're interested in sewing for yourself or for others, especially for your children. Because you know what? When you make a mistake on a child's outfit, nobody but you notices it's it, especially the child. So it's a good way to learn. I can feel that still way up here. Let me find my opening and see if I can poke it out with the scissors a little more. Okay, let's see if we can iron this now. Okay, if you see flies around here, they come out in mass every time I start to record. I don't know where they come from, but they always show up when I'm recording. Okay, I'm going to take it over the machine now and do a top stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the edge, but I'm not going to do anything on the flat side. I'm not even going to close that seam because we are going to put that, insert that into a seam later. Okay, you probably noticed that while I was over there, I also top stitched the collar. I'd forgotten that we need to do that. And I also, even though I told you we didn't have to stitch this straight line, I did want to top stitch the bow part of it. Now, the pattern does not tell you to top stitch, at least I didn't see that it did. But I'd always top stitch. If, I mean, not always, but uh, I like to top stitch. And the main reason is, when this comes out of the washer, you don't want to have to fish out all those that seam again and try to iron it. Uh, it's going to be held in place, and it's going to be a lot faster to iron. So I am sure this little girl's mother will appreciate that I did top stitch it. Now, I'm using white thread on the whole project because I didn't want to be switching threads back and forth during the uh, video. But... Otherwise, I would probably sew all the dress with this deep blue and uh, the bow with this pink, salmonish pink color that's in this. I don't know how it looks on camera, but uh, it's, it's a pink, but it's not a, it's more of a salmon pink. Okay, we've got, let me iron this real quick, and then we've got our preliminary stuff done. And we're going to start putting the dress together. And this, to me, is the most tedious and the hardest part. So let's get it done and out of the way. Now I'm going to take the back, which is the piece that was cut on the fold. And I'm going to turn it with right sides together. Make sure I get that kind of smooth there. I'm going to go ahead and iron it just a little bit. And then I want to go over three inches from this edge, and I'm going to draw a line an inch and a half down.
Okay. Now I'm going to take that to the machine and just sew that and backstitch on both places. And I didn't mention, but you need to backstitch on at the beginning and end of every seam when you're making clothing. That's kind of important. You don't want it coming apart on the child. Now that I've done that, I want to open this up and where I had my center ironed there, I am going to line that up with the seam to make sure it's all centered. I think it might be easier to do it this way. And then, this should be an inch and a half from the fold and down your, your center fold. And we're gonna iron that pleat in all the way down the dress. Now we're going to do the same thing on this side. Probably shouldn't have steamed that from the back. I should do it from the front to make sure it's all meeting up right. Okay. making funny noises. Okay, there is our, our center pleat in the back. I mean, yeah, it's in the back. Okay, I'm gonna take this over to the machine and I'm going to come out a half inch and go down to the inch and a half where we sewed it. So a half inch over, go down an inch and a half, and a half inch back. I think I will mark that so I don't have to guess. Take that pin out now. So I'm lining the half inch mark down my fold, center fold. I'm gonna draw a line down an inch and a half. And I'm gonna do that on the other side. It's almost hard to see that seam, that center fold there. Inch and a half. And then connect them two. So I'm gonna go sew that box and we'll have to pivot at the corners, which means you leave your needle down as you turn your fabric and then you start sewing the other direction. I've been telling you wrong. This is the front, not the back. I was getting confused. The bow goes in the back, the pleat goes in the front. So forgive me for that. Now then, the next step we want to do is to put our collar on. 
and we want to overlap it ever so slightly. So these places should meet right up here and we'll have about a fourth to a half inch overlap because our final seam is gonna come down a half inch. Okay, if you'll see where the point comes together, that's laying right on top of my center fold. Let's see if I can pin that without messing it up. Maybe a clip would be better. Probably would. because it doesn't take much for that to get off just a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna take it over the machine and I'm gonna baste it in, which just means I'm gonna sew it in pretty close to the edge, or you could put it on a basting stitch and use a uh, real long stitch so it's easy to take out, but we won't have to take it out if we do it close to the edge. Okay, let me... press. Um, one thing I might have told you wrong in the beginning, I apologize. Uh, I may have told you to, to when we sewed the collar, to sew these little ends too. I'm going to have to look at my footage to see, but you don't. You only sew, sew this curved side, and I didn't sew the ends, but I'm, I'm thinking I may have told you that in the beginning, but only these uh, when we're putting the collar together, only the curved, rounded side at the bottom. Okay, now it's time to put our back on, not our front. This is our back. So, I want to line these edges up where the sleeve goes. And any excess will stick out on the collar side, but it really won't after we've sewn it because our seam's coming, gonna start way back here. And it will meet at the right place. Okay, I'm going to go sew that, those two seams right now. Now that we have our shoulder seams sewn, we're going to we clip a few threads. Iron open our seam allowance. The next thing we want to do is to take our sleeves and I folded these, well, oh well, I cut them on the fold, but I put just a little notch at the center top of both of these. That's so when I'm lining it up, I'll know that's the center. But I'm gonna take it over uh, to the machine because we need to gather these sleeves. And the way to gather is to put a uh, set your sewing machine on the longest stitch width you can, which is probably about a six stitch length, I'm sorry. And 
you go all the way around the edge, then we're gonna come back and do another row right next to it. Now, when gathering a skirt, I will do three rows, and then sew between rows two and three when I put it in. That'll give you a much nicer, even gather than to, definitely don't do it with just one. I know it's extra work, but if we want it to look good, we need to put in that extra work. So about a quarter inch and about a half inch, although I think I'm going to do just a scant less than a quarter and a half. So when I sew my seam allowance, I don't have to pull out uh, the gathering stitch because it won't show. And my final seam is going to be a half inch in. So let me go do that on both of these get tangled up in anything. And leave a long thread on both ends. On both ends. both of these face up. It doesn't matter which way, but you just want to remember how you did it because the easiest thread to pull is the bobbin thread. And so I am going to take the bobbin thread, separate it here from the top threads, on both of these. I'm gonna to try to pull them both at once. And then I'm going to gather it up. And I believe this is about a two to one gather, so you wanna, it'll end up being half the size that it was. And I'm gonna just work it towards the middle. And then come on the other side, and look, I didn't have my threads. out behind me like I told you to. There they are. So I'm going to take these two, which are the bobbin thread. Now you can use the top thread. It'll still gather just fine, but it's just this one is a lot easier. Maybe I shouldn't say a lot. It's better. <laughs> Now, at some point, you need to stop and kind of line up your little notch if you put one, and let's see. Okay, I've gathered it too much there, so we're going to have to kind of space it out. I don't think this is a two to one gather. This is just a slight gather. Take some of the gather out here. It's a lot easier to pull some of it out then. Okay, now I'm gonna pin my center notch with my center seam. get these threads kind of out of the way so I can pull them or let them out when I need to or if I need to and I just want to kind I'm going to pull it just a little bit I'll let it out just a hair too much And 
And most patterns don't have you gather the whole sleeve. They have a couple of notches that you gather between, but this one had you gather the whole thing. But I still would put the bulk of my gathers at the top. You just want to try to get them as even as possible. They won't be perfect. And it's helpful to put a lot of pins because that'll keep your gathers pretty consistent. Now, every time I look at it, I adjust something. So there comes a point you just have to go sew it and quit worrying about it. Okay, let's pin the other one. And, and I did do right sides together. Now, there are gathering foots and... Uh, what's the other one? There, there's two different kind of foots you can use. And there's, you can play with your tension and let it gather it. This is the old-fashioned way. This way I do it. It's tried and true. And Okay, let's see how this is working out. I'll put my little notch right at my seam. Pin it, then let's see here. Okay, I may have gathered it ever so slightly more than I needed to, but I'm gonna match up the ends and then just adjust it a little bit. Sometimes just tugging on it will do it. Now, you can see that if we had done three gathers and then stitched between them, it would be holding our gathers nice and neat so you didn't get any pleats. I, I don't go to that much trouble on a sleeve, but I certainly do on a gathered skirt. Okay, this is definitely gathered too much, so we'll let a little of it out. Okay, I'm going to take this over to the machine and put my half inch seam allowance here and being careful not to get anything uh, folded over or pleated. You want to stitch right on top of the little gathers. Okay, be sure and put your sewing machine back to uh, a normal stitch length. I'm using a stitch length of about three, but you don't want it on the gathering stitch. And this time we do need to back stitch. started on the wrong end, you always want to sew with your gathers on top so you can keep them smooth. Okay, 
that gathered pretty nicely. I don't have any places where I caught pleats or anything like that. Now, the next thing we need to do is make a casing for our elastic. So we're going to turn under about a quarter of an inch. Iron it in place. And I, I have been sewing long enough, I eyeball most things, but um, you do want to make sure it's consistent. So if it helps, measure it. And now we're going to do about a half an inch up for our casing. And I'll measure it ever so often just to double check. But the main thing is to get it consistent between two sleeves. You don't want one sleeve shorter than the other. Do our other one. Oh, you can get rid of all your extra gathering threads. You can pull them out if you want, uh, if they come out easy. But we took a big enough seam that they won't show. You can leave them in. But if by chance they're showing on the outside, you will need to take them out. And again, your sleeve is a curved seam, so we need to trim it. They suggest surgeon all your seams, which is a good idea if you have a serger, but if you don't, you can actually uh, use a zigzag or uh, an overlock stitch that's on your sewing machine. That kind of stuff is not 100% necessary. It will help with raveling, but a uh, pinking shears does the same thing. So I am going to trim mine, maybe not quite as short as I would other things. I want to trim it from the top side. I just, I mean, from the gathering side, I want to make sure I don't catch anything. And this will trim off a bunch of your uh, gathering thread, so you won't have to pull that out. Now, before I go sew the casing in, I'm gonna go ahead and press this sleeve seam best I can. Now I'm going to take it off to the machine, except I kind of messed up my <laughs> fold there. Let's get it back in there real quick. Okay, this one's... Now, I'm going to take it over to the machine, and I'm going to stitch real close to the edge here because our elastic, our quarter-inch elastic, is going to go in this seam. Okay. 
Okay, now that we have sewn in our casing, I want to take a piece of my elastic and put it in my bodkin. You can use a safety pin if you'd rather. And then I'm going to stick a pin here at the end like this so that it doesn't pull all the way through. I'm going to put my bodkin in here and thread my elastic. When it comes out the other side, I'm going to pin it in place there. And then I'll also pin here. And then before I sew anything, I'm going to stretch it out and make sure, rub my fingers across it, make sure my elastic's not twisted in there. I tried to not twist it as I fed it through. But we'll do the other one, then we'll take it over to the machine and just stitch on the ends to hold it in place till we're ready to close that seam. Now that the elastic's in our sleeves, we're going to put right sides together again and sew our side seam. We don't have to worry about the elastic coming out because we stitched it in place. You want to make sure these seams meet. and the top here meets and if you cut it out right it should meet at the bottom too so i'm going to pin this to hold it in place and do the other side then we'll run stitch this up Now I'm going to take it over to the machine and stitch this seam. Remember to use a half inch seam allowance. Okay, my seams are done and sorry, I ran out of thread so I stopped the camera to change the thread and I forgot to turn it back on. So I think you only got to see me sew one side seam. I am going to trim this about a quarter of an inch from the seam this will keep it from raveling. This seam doesn't need trimming as for uh, to get it to lay smooth because it's not curved except right up here. But it will uh, keep it from raveling as much anyway with a pinking shear. Do the same thing on this side. Now, if you would like to zigzag your machines here on the edge or overlock them or use your serger, uh, that's a good thing to do too. But it's not necessary. I'm gonna 
pinking shears are getting dull. Now I'm going to iron it. I'm not ironing the seam open because I trimmed it so short. But I will iron it this way. Okay, we're getting close. Now the next thing we want to do, I need to flip my ironing board over to the ugly side so I have all that extra padding, is take our, our bias strip and, I, and bias tape is, is a strip that goes at a 45 degree angle. You have to line the bottom of your fabric up here and the side of it there and cut it at a 45 degree angle and then cut another one the width that you need it. Now, I am going to start on, on the back and take, a, but, but I'm gonna put the right side down here and I'm going to feed this as I go. I think I'm gonna turn a little under No, I won't have to do that. I won't have to do that because of our bow. Okay, so I'm just going to feed this and we're gonna go past our collar, catching all of it, and all the way to the other side here. Now, the reason we cut it on the bias is so it will bend with these curves. And if you cut it just straight, it's not gonna lay smooth. You're, you're not gonna be happy with it. So you do want to cut that on the bias. Now that we have that sewn on, we're going to fold it back till where it met, match, uh, meets the seam. You can even iron it if you want. And then we'll fold it over again. On our seam there. And we want to make sure that we cov uh, cover up the seam we just sewed. This is the seam we just sewed. And we, we need to make sure it covers that. I'm gonna pin this in place because there's a lot of curves to go around. And so you kind of have to shape the bias as you go around those curves. But it will lay nice and smooth because we cut it on the bias. And if you have trouble covering this seam, you might just want to trim a little bit off of your seam allowance. See my collar sticking out just a hair more on one side than the other there. And you can now see that even though we overlapped our collars, they're coming right together at the point. They're no longer overlapped. Now I'm going to take that over to the machine and 
Top stitch it right close to the edge all the way around. Now, you see how nice and neat that lays over the collar? And I am going to steam it really good. And this scoops down in the back. Get that. Now all we have to do is put on our bow and hem it, and we'll be done. For our bow, we want to start, this is our seam between the bow part and the ribbon part. We want to start about a half inch above the back seam here. So it would be like a half inch below this seam. And then we're gonna pin it all the way down. And that extra half inch is gonna give the bow uh, room to tie and lay smooth. And then we're going to bring it around to the other side and do this same thing. I want to bring it down the exact same amount. Okay, if you want, you could take it over to the machine and base stitch it kind of close to the edge just to hold it in place. But I'm going to try to do this without that step. I'm going to put right sides together. And now we're going to line up. And I can see now I did not do the exact same amount there. So I'm going to adjust that. And we're going to be sewing through six seams here, six layers of fabric, because we have two on the bow and one on the dress for each side. So I'm repinning it now. making sure that I have all layers lined up evenly. We're sandwiching in both of the bow pieces between the two back pieces of fabric. And they should come out the same down here, and they did. It's always good when a plan comes together like that.
Now I'm going to take it over to the machine and I'm going to start stitching here on our piece of bias we put on and make a half inch seam all the way down. Okay, can you see how this seam is a half inch above our bias? I'm going to come in a half inch and start sewing from the bias. And as I go, I'm going to make sure all my, see, I've got one seam already that's not completely lined up. Okay, here's our back and our seam. Let's iron this open best we can. Then I need to find the center here and line it up with the center of this and I'm going to pin it in place. Either I've got a dull pin or too many layers. There we go. Now we have this other one last piece. We're going to fold it right sides together and stitch a half inch seam here. I want to turn it inside out. Let's see if I can do this without my rod turner. Okay, there we go. Let's iron it so the seam is down the back. Now, Now, I want to find my bow center and mark it there. And I'm going to scrunch all of this up. Wrap this around and shape my bow best I can. I can't leave that pin in there. Now with this, I'm going to turn this under and I'm gonna pin it right here and we're going to have to hand stitch that. If we sew that by machine, it's going to show on the other side. So I will do that off camera. It's just one short little seam. And then we want to attach the bow at the same place on both shoulders. And it'll do that hand by hand too. Just a little slip a little knot there and now your your bow hangs I mean your ribbons hang down and there is the back of your dress and this these will kind of flap around the only thing left we have to do is to hem this dress. And so, what I'm going to do is iron under about a quarter of an inch 
again and then put about an inch hem in it all fold it up about an inch and then you can either sew that on the machine or by hand and I'll probably sew it on the machine but I'm going to change my thread before I do that so I will do that off camera too all right let me take care of those few things and I'll be back with you here's our final product didn't it turn out cute I will link the pattern below and hope you will visit the Violet Field Thread site and find a pattern or two you'd like. I want to add that I'm not affiliated with them and not receiving any compensation. I just like their patterns. I will continue to give a plug to my favorite pattern companies from time to time. So now you know you still have time to make this. I drag it out with lots of instructions for our beginners, but you should probably be able to sew this in less than two hours. Join me on Saturday as I make a matching shirt for the brother. I'm not sure what my video schedule will be like over the rest of the holidays, but I have some fun projects planned for next year. Thank you for joining me. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And remember, whatever you do, do it to the glory of the Lord.